they're really good at plug and play guys, uh, especially offensive linemen. They've done a great job with that, you know. But does you know guys like does the coaching staff with everybody over there on one year deals? How's that going to play? You know, are you willing to be able to think about uh, you know playing rookies at certain spots when jobs are on the line? You know, I think that's something that, you, that we all have to consider right now. You know, I, I've talked to a bunch of people over there. There's some uneasiness going on in that building because of the unknown. Yeah, you know, they don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. They're all thinking maybe they're going to have to hunt jobs after yeah. this year. So, yeah, that's that's what Jerry wants. He wants that uneasiness. But you also have to look. You know, if Mike McCarthy does does he want to? You know, does he want to? You know, plug and play a rookie in the offensive line and and take that chance. You know, we'll see. It'd have to be a hell of a rookie, you know, especially that position where even the future greats can struggle a little bit and, and cost you games. I don't know. I think I would look at this as if I'm a Mike McCarthy and I would say, guys, let's try to enjoy this ride. It might be my last year as a head coach. Um, the team is setting us up to be disappointing. And we can get mad about it. We can get frustrated about it. But they're not bringing back any of our free agents. They're not adding any good ones. So the writing is on the wall. Yeah, our our hope is if in their ability to to draft like crazy, and if that happens, then maybe we'll do better than last year. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll get new contracts. But but chances are we're just here to play out the string because Jerry Jones doesn't want to pay two coaches at the same time. Have you seen Jerry Jones ever talk about the Cowboys situation in the cap in such a dire way? No. I mean no. that that to me is where that's that's what kind of got my attention that all of a sudden like I've never heard Jerry talk about the cap and you know like you know the way he just described it talking with Tyron Smith about Tyron Smith that's just so unlike him but he said if he makes all those incentives and things like that we would be really wrecked yeah I don't remember Jerry ever saying anything like that with the cap like Am you I can't wrong? roll with an additional 10 million dollars mm. of a hit no I, I don't I don't think you're wrong mm. You know, I think he's trying to make excuses for how rough this is going to get. Well, what we said earlier, though, they could have flipped a lot of switches, and they chose not to do that, though, too. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not managing to win a Super Bowl in any year. They're they're managing, you know, to try to create the the higher lows, you know. And if if you can do that, then you know maybe your fan base is always on the edge of their seat, thinking we're just a player or two away, and it's it's about to be our turn. I know Jerry Jones believes significantly in the NFL business model of every time you go to play on Sunday, your fan base is excited just to see you win that game. And um, you know I, I think that's hard when you are a championship or nothing type of fan. Yeah, and he's he Jerry has lent voice to the idea of. Like one of his quotes from yesterday was, I think that we have been in a situation where we can get it done with lesser. Mm. He's, he's acknowledging, yeah, this is going to be a lesser version of ourselves. He says more doesn't necessarily beat Green Bay. There are other things. Maybe having it better strategically. Yeah. So he's calling out the coaches a little bit. Yeah. Fire them then. Strategically in different spots, but more than necessarily beat them either. Uh, so we're going to be asked to do some things different because we've got some different players. Is that maybe why the coaches are down today or the, the mood is low? You just told it. You just said you expect us to maybe do better with less. Yeah. You're, you're, you're just playing out the string. I, I think if you're, if you're this coaching staff, that would put me in a tough mood. And li like I said, I, I think in the coming weeks and months, you got to try to find yourself a way to rally and enjoy this because in the end you're you're coaching a pretty good football team that has a chance to make the playoffs. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, but this is also this is Jerry saying like I gave you I gave you coaching staff enough last year. You had enough. Yeah. And you didn't get it done with that. Yeah. So uh like it wasn't I couldn't have given you any better players to make this thing work. You strategically crapped the bed in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, which is, but but that's not totally fair. I mean, partially it is. Yes, your coaches, every single one of them let you down in that game. Everybody let you down in that game. But a lot of it was your players as well. The players yeah. that you handpicked, Jerry, this is your team, and you still want to act like there was enough on that roster last year. There was definitely enough to beat Green Bay. Yeah, Not enough to do much else after that. Yeah, not only are you kind of, uh, you know, saying we had more than enough on a flawed team, but you're you're kind of setting up the fans to blame us. And there's some blame to go with that coaching staff. Like they could, they could get much better success out of the running game. I think they were the only team in the NFL last year that gained less with motion at the snap in their run plays um, 
than without it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's something that if I'm Mike McCarthy and I'm thinking, how do we save our jobs? Let's take a big swing and make sure we're as up to date as possible with the coaching trends and whatever we've resisted over these previous four years. Let's throw to hell with that and get busy coaching as soon as we get at that rookie mini camp. You know, a different way of attacking on the ground because with well, a lesser offensive line, maybe a lesser running back, we got to somehow get four and a half in attempt. Right? I know that defensive coordinator will be ready. I don't know about anybody else. Yeah, and hey, that that could help you. I uh, yeah, that's that's my that's if you if if I do not want to see Mike McCarthy get fired now because I care so much about Mike Zimmer. Yeah, as a person and what he's going to try and do here, he might be up against it too much though too. But, this is very doable if he can get good play from Osa and Hankins and and Kendrick stays young, yeah. somewhat young. This is somewhat doable that you could have such a good defense that maybe the offense could be average and you win like that, and that goes to your Mike Zimmer possibly yeah. saving Mike McCarthy's job. Yeah, that's why I, I think if, if Mike's job is going to get saved, it's going to be because of Mike Zimmer. That's where I think it's going to go. We have another baby on the team, Wanye Thomas with Wanye Thomas Jr. He breaks up the girl dad run that we've been on. Hmm. It's been an epic uh, a girl dad run, and I participated in it. I contributed to that, uh, but maybe the uh, the pendulum swinging back the other way. Okay, uh, up next here in the Cowboys news of the evening, you know I think this is a positive. Actually, three former Cowboys who won't live up to their new contracts. I'm reading this on on the Landry hat because what you want your team to do in in a league where uh, salary cap space is so important is not bring back guys uh, who can't live up to the contract they're about to get. Now, in my mind, in free agency, you are going to overpay. You want to overpay to put your team over the top, not team build. (laughs) And uh, unfortunately, you know, like what the Titans did with Tony Pollard, I I think if they're really, really going for it and they want to go over the top and they're like, we need a runner, probably should have just stuck with Derrick Henry, didn't get the right player. But they're at least doing it right, that we're going to go spend money and maybe overspend for players because we think this is the end of our championship window. But Tony Pollard absolutely is a guy who's not going to live up to the contract. Right, Chief? Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think really any of these dudes that that left and got these contracts, mostly with the commanders. I think Tyler Biotish could be a big disappointment when it's all said and done for the commanders. Yeah. Yeah, he's number two on their list. Gets three years and $29 million, including 20.7 guaranteed. Congratulations to Biotish. I know it's got to be very exciting for him and his family. Grew up on a farm. Yeah. Still loves going up there. But, I mean, when we met him a couple of years ago at at one of the World Cup parties downtown, you could just see the drive and determination in his eyes to go chase that bag. Yep. You know, he he was he had just been in the weight room and working with the offensive line coach. He's like, I spent one week in Wisconsin. I was yeah. right back here, you know. And and two seasons happened. I don't think he got as good as he wanted to be, but he got good enough to to get ten million bucks. And I'm very happy the Cowboys didn't do that. That's one you'd be regretting for a long time. I just, you know, I, I think it's you know in a way a year late that they didn't have a chance to do it with Terrence Steele last year. You go back and unwind that it'd have been great and then the last player on this list is uh, Dorrance Armstrong and uh, he got uh, 45 million dollars 22 of it guaranteed there's no way that's going to spell anything but disappointment for the commanders fan base is it Brian they don't have any edge rushers so he's going to be the guy you know he he I'll tell you what I felt like that Fowler was a better player than him last year and the commanders got Fowler too, didn't they? They got both. Yeah. So I mean, Fowler, you know, probably should have had more opportunities. Armstrong has been a flash player all his career. You know, one, two, real good game, and then next thing you don't see him for three games. So, yeah, I that 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 could be one that could could come back and get them. If I'm new guy though, I'm looking around like, hold on here. We had a Chase Young. He just went one year and eleven million bucks, and we're throwing around forty five biggins for Dorrance Armstrong because he had nine sacks in twenty twenty two, and he knows Dan Quinn. Uh, he knows Dan. It's Quinn. Huge for the culture. Yeah, right about. That. He knows the scheme and stuff. Everybody needs a sponsor. That's worth twenty That's million true. guaranteed, if I've ever seen it.